Yesterday I didn't have a chance to continue with the sensing. I was outside and then came also the owner and we had a conversation about the setup, about the, how to proceed. Okay, so today, today pistoning gap. Uh, I want to mention, before I start with that, I want to mention that this sensing block, it's 2020 or 2019 and was a brand new, it has only 10,000 kilometers. I think has less than 10,000 kilometers. It's not suffering down. The crankshaft, <clears throat> it's a brand new, zero kilometers, OEM, all right? Now, to start getting, let us say, the dial bore cage measuring the engine block and getting also the micrometer, start measuring the journal of the crankshaft, nah, it will gonna be like, well, that's why I did it with this way, how I did it. I use a plastic cage, I verify the clearance, and I'm happy. The final check will gonna be when, while you're gonna spin the crankshaft after the installation to see that the spin is nice and it's not biting anywhere. I'm not expecting something bad on a brand new original crankshaft. All right, that's why I did it with a. It's not a shortcut. I can measure the crankshaft, but it's pointless. Or I can use let's say the plastic gates. I can spin the crankshaft, make a mark, and then test the plastic gates in different spots if you want to see if it's bent or something. Uh, in this huge box that it came the crankshaft and with all this packaging it's impossible I mean if you even if you throw it from 20 meters high it's not gonna have any problem on this packaging how it came that's one thing that's one reason why it's it's different let us say you're gonna treat different an engine with a hundred thousand kilometers uh, and different an engine with less than 10,000 kilometers and brand new parts from this point of view like for the pistons I get some measurements but they're all the same there is some small minor difference it's not a big deal <clears throat> in any case where am i now let's set up the piston ring the gap what do we see the second piston ring when i insert inside the cylinder it's 0 0.34 34 35 34 34 of millimeter okay the first one the top one it's zero that means i cannot enter the filler cage and i'm starting from zero it didn't uh, it didn't bend the piston ring, I mean, it went inside and it was exactly zero. If I get the number three piston ring, the second, the not the top, the second piston ring from the number three cylinder, and I place it on the number two cylinder, I'm gonna find the same results 0.35. That means this is the piston ring, not the cylinder. This is one indication that to see that the cylinder it does have a run out. If I had, let us say, different values, if I have, let us say, one ton of millimeter here, zero here, two ton of millimeter here, and then I'm getting this piston ring, if, if let us say, this piston ring has two ten of millimeter gap, and I put on this cylinder, example, all right, and zero, that means this cylinder has run out. If this piston ring, I have mentioned this also before, but I'll go mention that again, no problem. If this piston ring has two ten of millimeter clearance, the gap here, and I took it from the number three and put it on number two, two, and I see again to 10 of millimeter clear uh, gap. That means it's the piston ring. It's not the material, the, the, the dimensions, they're not the same. All right? I hope that makes sense. I hope that you understand what I said. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> so, now let's continue with the piston rings. Taking also the oil control ring, just in case to be okay. Usually it's ready out of the box, the oil control ring. Yeah, that's that's the plan. That's what I'm gonna do now. Did I cover you with the crankshaft block piston rings? Yeah. Okay, now come on, where is it? Okay. I'm using it with that one just only because it's not clear, you cannot see it very well. That's why I'm showing you the previous one. Also, this is. Dang it, dang it. 0.6, alright. Where am I? Where am I pointing? Turn on the light, Tassos. Awesome. 0.6 just, exact. All right, let's continue with the rest. 
Finish with the piston and gap. They are excellent. If you get to see the number two and you test it in all the other cylinders, you're gonna see the same number. Same thing also for this one, let us see the second or the top piston in. If you get the number five and you test everywhere else, it's gonna be exactly the same number. So that means it doesn't matter if I put the number two or number three or the number three or the number five. I'm keeping it in order, like always. But you understand my point, right? Let me take care of the tools and the piston inks, put it in an envelope, like always, and moving on. Behind the curtain. Time to get some weight. All right, I already check all the connecting rods, and in all of them I have the same results. I'm gonna explain. All right, this is 5.5 I'm removing the connecting rod. I'm putting it back in place. 5.5 Removing it. 5.5 We are talking about the connecting rod number 50. B50. All right, now. If I show you back in 7 of January, 7 January 21, here, the number 50, I found it 552.5. It's with the bolts, by the way. The one with the bolts. <laughs> Beautiful, excellent. I will gonna measure everything again. I'm gonna write in a new paper now. But, you know. And some people they're saying whenever you're putting it, whenever you're placing on the scale, you see different results. It's not the case. Doesn't matter how many times I'm gonna put it, it's gonna show me always plus minus 0.1 gram. 0.1 gram. Okay. Let's move on. Let's get some weight. I'm very curious to see the pistons. The wrist pin is supposed to be exact. Plus minus 0.1 gram. I wanna see the pistons. All right, let me tell you a couple of things. I'm going to show you a couple of things before I continue. The old setup, it was the lightest, let us say, if you like. I'm talking about piston, C-safe, wrist pin, connecting rod, connecting rod bolts, uh, connecting rod bearings, okay, without the piston rings and without showing how much it's at big end, all right, or small end. It, it can be uh, the old setup, sorry. If you get the lightest uh, connecting rod, piston, wrist pin, bolts, uh, bearings, it can be 1 kilo and 25.3 grams. And the heaviest, it was 1 kilo 27.9 grams. Before. Okay? Now, with these pistons, this wrist pin, and this is safe, uh, it can be the minimum, the lightest, 1 kilo 35.2 grams. The heaviest, 1 kilo 38.6 grams again this doesn't indicate how much it's the big end all right or the small end it's different thing uh, then there is another one combination not with these parts with different parts that can give you 913.4 total all right and has minus 20 grams at big end that means this combination it's giving 20 grams missing from the big end and the other 100 grams, 101 grams let us say if you get from this one let, let's get from this one the other 100 grams it's missing from the big end from the piston, this pin, C safe and up because again I have mentioned that before when it's reaching a top dead center it has to stop the piston and then it has to go back again down and then when it's down it has to stop and it has to go up again let me continue. Okay, now this is the combination. This is gonna be this connecting on this three spin, this piston, this C safe, C clip, called as you like. All right. Now I have 0.2 gram average on the small end, 0.25 in total, and 0.3 grams on the big end. Without touching the connections, without removing material, whatever. All right. I have one small problem. 
What's my problem? Okay, let me show you. This is from the kit. The, the pistons, they came with this C clip, C safe C clip, this wrist pin and this piston. And the piston rings, obviously. Now, if you try to put this here inside, in place, hey, come on, will ya? Okay, if you try to put it here inside, it doesn't come, because it's greater. <laughs> One second, let me put the stand to show you what I mean. Just, just give me a second. All right, let me show you this. Stock wrist pin, 23 mm. It's the same thing. Okay, stock wrist pin, 23. Aftermarket wrist pin, 21. Okay, now, if I try to install this here inside, see how big it is, oops, sorry, see how big it is, I cannot compress it that much to enter this inside this hole. From the other hand, if I take the same safe, what you see, and I try to insert it on the stock wrist pin here, on the stock piston, it comes beautiful inside, nice in place. Now, how are going to secure it? How are going to compress it that much to enter there without compromising the safe? I'm going to try on camera. What should I do, right? One second, just a second. I mean, what the f it's not even round anymore. This is how it's supposed to install it. It's super tight. Okay. The tight. I mean, okay, screw it. I'll continue like that. I'm going to send one video to the customer. Because it looks like that usually no need so much force to, to put the, the C safe, you know, compare it with the, any other piston. Uh, even, even if you get the stock one or if you get the, the previous pistons that had, let me bring the previous pistons for one second. All right, the previous pistons has 22 millimeter wrist pin, all right? That's the previous pistons. So if you compare, Uh, maybe I'm making a mistake, I don't know, but if I try to put it inside, it's much easier to put this inside, all right, than this one. Okay, who knows? I'm going to send one video to the customer, just in case that they didn't make any mistake with a... Let me take this away from here. I'm going to be here. I put both sides now. Yeah, so nice. This is the stock one. Let's put the stock one back. All right. So this is the only one that I need here. So it should be fine, right? Just to verify that I have the correct safe. I'm going to send, like I said, one video to the customer, to send to the company, just to be sure that this is what they want me to use. All right? So don't have any headache. I've checked it now 10 times, another one time, 11 times, let us say, up to now. It looks like it's been seated properly. It looks like it's in place, where it's supposed to be. This is how it looks like. One verification from the company that that's the correct one. You don't have any headache. And there is spins. Uh, it spins. You can turn it. That means not on the edge.
Okay. All right. I'll go and continue. I'll continue. I'll go and wait also for the. I'll go and continue working, installing. Now I'm gonna go to clean the crankshaft. I'll go and just wait to see the answer that this is the correct one, and it, it's not been any mistake, let us say, by any means. All right. Uh, let me take care about the piston connections for now. Crankshaft. All right. Crankshaft. It's been washed, blowing with air. Beautiful, excellent. Lower bearings, thrust washers, upper bearings, oil jets, all the threads here inside, they're perfect clean. There is no oil inside, there is nothing, there is no dirt or something. Oil galleries. Looking beautiful. Some assembly grease to block this hole, then high viscosity lubricant, and then place in the crankshaft. Now I have it over there. Alright. I zero it before I put this the number five. Now I put the number five. And we are looking good. It makes the same movement. Where I'm pointing? I'm not watching through the phone. We can continue. Moving on. Looking good. Feels good. Not bad. Not bad. Let's make it upside down. Alright, pistons, all back in place. I'm gonna show you what I don't like. I'm gonna show you what I don't like. I didn't turn down full the connecting bolts. It's only 10 Nm. Alright, just I wanna show you one second. Let me spin a little bit. That's what I don't like. That's what I don't like. Let me bring the bridge. I'm always measuring on the wrist pin. I have mentioned that. One million times, I have to mention that again. I'm not measuring the piston here and here because of this move that can make. I'm measuring also, always, here and here. Where is located the wrist pin? All right, at this point. Here and here. Let's measure it here. How much coming up after top dead center? All right. Deck at zero. It's stepping here and stepping here. All right, you see the piston that comes out. Yeah, you can see also through the camera. All right, let me get it from here. It's, I was have it here, and it's at zero. Let me place it on the piston. What you see here, I'm just pushing it down. Four ten of a millimeter higher the piston. Okay, okay. You remember when I was measuring the compression height of the pistons? Go watch the video again. All right, no worries. Let's take it down. Let's bring this one up. It looks like it's a top that center. Let's see here. Ah, this is a little bit higher. How beautiful is that? Uh -huh. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, a little bit more than it's thirty five. This is okay, zero deck, all right. Let's squeeze a little bit down here. Let's see back how much it is. So it's 0.4. It's, yeah, it's 4. Yeah, it's almost 4 ten of a millimeter higher. 38, okay. Amazing. Splendid. Okay, that's it for today. I'm gonna cover it. I'm gonna continue on Monday. No cross hats, no rough sound, nice and smooth, not bad.